Shalom, Captain O.C. Officer Kim Ewell. And today is 15 Minutes with the Captains. Today we're going to go into a very, very interesting topic. Today is a topic that a lot of people use a lot of different ways in mainstream Christianity. So we want to make sure we get the understanding so there's no um, confusion. All right, today's class is titled Samaria, the Woman at the Well. A lot of people have a lot of thoughts on this Samaritan woman. Was she an Israelite? Did she receive salvation? Was she a Gentile? Is this the first time? Is she Cornelius before Cornelius? Do people even understand Cornelius? But that's a whole other topic. But we're going to get into the Samaritan woman today. Let's go to John chapter 4, and let's start at verse 5. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 5. Uh -huh. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria. A city of what? Samaria. Uh -huh. Which is called Sychar, uh -huh. near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Now, if you don't understand the Bible, you would not understand who Jacob is. So let's understand the significance of him being in the land of Samaria at Jacob's well. Who is Jacob in the Bible? Show me who Jacob is real quick. Let's get that in Genesis chapter 32 and verse 28. The book of Genesis chapter 32 verse 28. Mm -hmm. And he said... Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, uh -huh. but Israel. But what? But Israel. All right, go back to John 4. So I just wanted to show you. This was the land that was given to who? To Israel from the beginning. We got to understand that. Now keep reading. Verse 6. Uh -huh. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. Uh -huh. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. So it came out a woman of Samaria. Now let's get a little bit of more understanding of Samaria. Because we understood Jacob's land was Israel. Now let's get some more understanding. Go to 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 29. What is the significance of this woman coming out of Samaria? Read that. The book of 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 29. Uh -huh. And in the 30th and 8th year of Asa, uh -huh. king of Judah, uh -huh. began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel. To do what? To reign over Israel. Read. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria. Where? In Samaria. So Samaria was the capital of Israel. Read. 20 and 2 years. Uh -huh. Was that it on that? That's it on that. So go back to John. So now we understand the land was given to Israel, mm -hmm. and this is also the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel, which we're going to get into in a second, speaking about the split. Now go back to John 4, and let's start at verse 8. The book of St. John, chapter 4, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Uh -huh. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, uh -huh. How is it that thou, being a Jew, uh -huh. askest drink of me, Three. which am a woman of Samaria? Uh -huh. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, this is a very, very important scripture. There's two things I want you to take away from this. The first thing is, this woman of Samaria understood the history between what? The southern kingdom and northern kingdom. She also understood that they did not deal with each other. Showing you what? She knew something that if this was a, a heathen, they would not have understood that history. But let's get into it. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 11. So what are we going to show you? We're going to show you that she understood that what? There was a split in the nation of Israel. There was now two kingdoms, two nations within the nation of Israel. Read that. 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 11. 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 11. Uh -huh. Wherefore the Lord saith unto Solomon, uh -huh. For as much as, th as this th is done of thee, uh -huh. and thou hast not kept my commandment and my statutes, uh -huh. which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, Read. and I will give it to thy servant, Read. notwithstanding in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. So what was going to happen for Solomon's sin? The nation of Israel would be split up. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, ultimately, it was only going to be Judah at first, but ultimately ended up being those three tribes. And then what? What they call today as the lost ten tribes of Israel were given to who? Jeroboam. There was a split. Jump down to verse 31. Same chapter. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 11, verse 31. Uh-huh. And he said to Jeroboam, take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, behold, 
I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon uh -huh. and will give 10 tribes to thee. You see that? He was going to give 10 tribes to Jeroboam. Now, you got to read through this whole thing. You'll get a better context. But I'm trying to get this in 15 minutes. Go to chapter 12 and read verse 16. I'm going to show you the split being completed. The book of King, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 16. Uh -huh. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Uh -huh. Neither have we an inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. To what? To your tents, O Israel. Because Rehoboam rejected the counsel of the older men, the nation of Israel, the northern kingdom said, To your tents. They left the land. They, did, they wanted nothing to do with Judah. Read. Now see to thine own house, David. Uh -huh. So Israel departed unto their tents. So there was a split. Both nations went their own way. Go to uh, Sirach chapter 47, verse 20 and verse 21 real quick. So understand, what we just read was very important. I know we did it fast. I would advise you to go back and read it. But there was a split within the nation of Israel. There was hatred between the two nations. Between the southern kingdom and northern kingdom. Read that. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 20. Uh -huh. Thou didst stain thy honor Read. and pollute thy seed, uh -huh. so that thou broughtest wrath upon thy children and was grieved for thy folly. Read. So the kingdom was divided. So what? The kingdom was divided. So the kingdom was divided. Read. And out of Ephraim ruled a rebellious kingdom. So the kingdom was divided. That's what I wanted you to get out of that. Now from there, let's go back. To Hosea chapter 4. We're going to go to Hosea chapter 4 and verse 17. Because she said, how be it thou being a Jew, mm -hmm. knowing you have no dealings with the Samaritans? How is that? Why did they have no dealings with them? Read that. Hosea 4 and verse 17. The book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. Uh -huh. Ephraim is joined to idols. Ephraim is joined unto idols. Read. Let him alone. Let him alone. Go to Hosea chapter 8 and verse Ephraim is joined unto idols. Let him thus alone. We had no dealings with him. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 8, verse 4. Uh -huh. They have set up kings, but not by me. Read. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Uh -huh. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols. Right. Because when you read down in 1 Kings 12, what did they do? They set up two golden calves. They said, these are your gods. Read. That they may be cut off. That they what? That they may be cut off. They were cut off out of the nation of Israel. We had no dealings. Like the lady just, like the woman in Samaria, she understood this history. Last one, Zechariah 11 and 14. Just showing you, what did she mean when she said, you knowest thou being a Jew, have no dealings with me being of what? Of Samaria or of the northern kingdom. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 verse 14. Uh-huh. Then I cut asunder mine own staff, uh -huh. my other staff, Read. even bands, even that what? I, even bands, Read. that I might break the brotherhood uh -huh. between Judah and Israel. That I might break the brotherhood between who? Between Judah and Israel. And this woman of Samaria, she understood that to the T. Now, let's go back to John chapter 4. We're going to pick up at verse 10. She said, how being thou a Jew have dealings with me? So, so far, this is not a Gentile. Yeah. We're showing you the history and we're showing you this woman had to have been what? An Israelite. She was not of the other nations. All right. Samaria were Israelites. They were Israelites. If you never read the Bible, you don't know that. Mm. You don't know that. But we, we're showing you that. Read that. John 4 and verse 10. The book of St. John chapter 4 verse 10. Uh -huh. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God. And who it is that saith to thee, mm -hmm. give me to drink. Uh -huh. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now, we're not going to go too deep into this, but all he's saying, he was offering her what? Salvation. Now, when you jump down to verse 22, what do you say? Salvation is of the Jews. We're not going to read it, but he said that. So she had to have been in the lineage of the Israelites to, for him to give her that statement. Right. Because right. we get another example in Matthew 15. He didn't, he didn't offer her the, the, the waters of uh, right. the everlasting waters. He didn't do that. So from there, jump down to verse um, 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Art thou greater than our then father what? Jacob? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Read. Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself 
and his children and his cattle. Now, you better listen. She said, art thou greater than what? Our father, Jacob, mm -hmm. showing you what? She was of the line of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some of you Israelites, uh, some of you Christian scholars that have a little understanding of the Bible. You say, well, what happened was they were taken out of the land and the people were moved in the land mm -hmm. and they knew what was going on. So let's show you that history. And I'm going to show you. No, this this woman right here. She was of the line of Israel. Let's go to Second Kings chapter 17. Let's read 22 and 23 because we're going to cover this completely. All right. Second Kings 17 verse 22 and 23 read that. the book of second kings chapter 17 verse 22 uh-huh for the children of israel walked in all the sins of jeroboam read. which he did uh -huh. they departed not from them until the lord removed israel uh -huh. out of his sight read. as he had said by all his servants the prophets so was israel carried away out of their own land to assyria unto this day so all of the northern kingdom was carried out of the land of Assyria. So you might say, okay, well, you just cut yourself. Now, let's get the understanding. What happened? Let's go to 1 Maccabees chapter 10 and verse 33. There was a time in the history, which a lot of you don't have. In this book, it shows you how the true Jews or the true Israelites returned back into the land of Samaria. Read that. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 10, verse 33. Uh -huh. Moreover, I freely set at liberty every one of the Jews that were carried captive. That were what? Carried captive Read. out of the land of Judea uh -huh. into any part of my kingdom. Mm. So there was a time when they allowed them to go back into their land. Where did they go? Jump down to verse 38. Verse 38. Uh -huh. And concerning the three governments that added to Judea mm -hmm. from the country of Samaria. From what? The country of Samaria. Samaria was one of those lands where they went back to. So understand that. So yes, yes, this is an Israelite. Now, go back to John and let's pick up at chapter 4 and let's read verse 19. The book of St. John, chapter 4, verse 19. Uh -huh. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So now she's like, hold on, you cut me up. I, I, I perceive you got more understanding than the average Joe Smoke. Right. Read. Our fathers. Our what? Our fathers uh -huh. worship in this mountain. Uh-huh. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her. Uh, hold on now. So I want to hit that. She said, our fathers worship in this mountain. In this and mountain. And they were in Samaria. Mm. Hmm. Now go back to 1 Kings chapter 16. Let's show them worshiping in that mountain in Samaria. 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 31. Showing you this woman was an Israelite. Read that. First Kings 16 and verse 31. The book of First Kings chapter 16 and verse 31. And we're going to read to verse 32. And it came to pass as it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, uh -huh. the son of Nebat, read. that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, uh -huh. king of the Zidonians, read. and went and served Baal and worshipped him. So just a little side note. Every single northern kingdom king was wicked. They worship other gods. Read. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, uh -huh. which he had built Where? in Samaria. Where did he build it? In Samaria. He said, our fathers worship in this mountain. Mm -hmm. But you say we got to worship in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now go to Tobit. Go to Tobit chapter 1 and verse 6. I'm going to show you. Why did Christ say you're supposed to worship in Jerusalem? Because those that were righteous amongst the northern kingdom understood that. Tobit 1 and 6. The book of Tobit, chapter 1, verse 6. Uh -huh. But I alone went often to Jerusalem. To where? To Jerusalem Read. at the feast. At the what? At the feast. Because he understood Deuteronomy 16 and 16. It says three times a year you're supposed to bring your offerings up to where? Jerusalem. But this woman of Samaria who was stuck in the sins of her forefathers said we worship in this mountain. Because Northern Kingdom never did what was right before the Lord. That's why they got cast out and that's why they were cut off. But understand, when Christ came, according to Zechariah 12 and 7, that's why he didn't deal with him. We're not going to read it. But according to Zechariah 12 and 7, he had to go into the Jews first. That's why he said, hey, don't go into the Gentiles yet. Because he had to come. He had to die. He had to break that middle wall of partition. Then they could go forth and teach the northern kingdom or who they call what the Gentiles or the strangers or the uncircumcised in the New Testament. That's what that's going into. So 
Go back to John 4 and verse 22, and it's going to be the last scripture. Showing you the woman at Samaria was an Israelite. Read that. The book of St. John, chapter 4, verse 22. Uh-huh. Ye worship, ye know not what. You what? Ye worship, ye know not what. Read. We know what we worship. Uh-huh. For salvation is of the Jews. For what? For salvation is of the Jews. So he understood that salvation was coming to those of the nation of Israel. If it wasn't, he would not have wasted that much time edifying and teaching his sister. Remember, Christ is the same man that said, cast not your pearls before swine. So we pray you understand that message. Once again, the woman of Samaria the, at the well, she was an Israelite. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.